I sat, the mud-brown rubber of the seat below me, my face pressed against the glass as we drove down the Pan American in our big, old, rust-yellow school bus from Indiana, which had been driven down many years prior. The air was permeated with the sound of chatter as nearly 30 people held discussions up and down the vehicle. However, I was determined to remain focused, studying the world beyond that glass window. We were headed to Santa Elena for the first time, to meet the children we would spend the next seven days with, and I was thrilled. The brightly colored houses of Managua, Nicaragua, dressed up in bright sunflower yellow and a mint-like teal, blurred by as we drove through the city. I noticed several slightly emaciated horses, their ribs visible to all, pulling carts, as well as small piles of garbage, a rank odor drifting from them, along the side of the road. But what we experienced when we arrived at the village was beyond anything I could have imagined. As we pulled through the entrance to the village, I could feel the change in our environment as tangibly as the warm sun on my face. The scent smelled strongly of sewage, garbage, and human waste, wafting around, filling the space like smoke in a chimney. It seemed to appear instantaneously, as if it had been held back by some invisible barrier. The stench filled the air around us. Children of all ages, some adorned in their finest dresses, while others in t-shirts two sizes too big, came running to meet us, their chocolate and black colored heads bobbing up and down as they chased us down the street, announcing our arrival with shouts of gringos, gringos, a term of, for a non-Hispanic person, leaping over the streams of nasty, milky white water and sewage that ran along the sides of the dusty streets. Many of their houses were made of concrete and metal. Trash littered the streets. An abundance of strikingly emaciated wild dogs wandered up and down the lanes, cowering in fear of being beaten, as wild chickens waddled along, their chicks all in a row. I could often see more horses, looking tired and worn with protruding ribs, pulling old rough-hewn metal and wooden carts up and down the street. When we arrived at the church, we were immediately greeted by the children. As Robert stepped off the bus, a little boy came running, his face lit up with a huge smile to give him a hug. A little girl inquired about Carrie, a look of expectancy in her eyes. We had to tell her that her dear friend had not returned with us this year. Many old friends were filled with joy at reconnecting with those they loved, and many new friendships were developed over the chicken dance, the Macarena, and a Nicaraguan children's game, Don Macaron, as well as what I referred to as Lock the Boys in the Lion's Den. Seven days later, I once again sat on the same cool, mud-colored leather bus seat, gazing out the dust-covered window, tears blurring my vision. I watched as friends gave each other one last hug, tears the size of mountains rolling down their cheeks and splashing into the dirt below. While we all knew we would see these children again someday, we still felt the aching sorrow of leaving our newly found friends behind. We loved them with all of our hearts. Little did I know, on that day so long ago when we first drove into the village, how much these children would capture my heart. A small smile flit across my face as I thought, maybe next year, when we step off that bus, it will be me the children are asking for.